Hi everyone! Today I'm going to be demonstrating this colored pencil drawing of an autumn leaf. I am using colored pencils for this drawing, Prismacolor Premier and Faber-Castell Polychromos. And I am drawing this on Strathmore Bristol Smooth Paper. I'm using the 300 series. You can see my reference image on the left and obviously my drawing on the right. I'm starting to work on just getting the outline in place. I'm using some really sharp polychromos pencils to draw that outline. And now you can see me beginning to work on the veins for this drawing. It's really important for me to make sure I have the veins going in the right direction. It's going to help give shape and dimension to this leaf. Adding a few little details around them. I like to work by filling in the most obvious areas of my drawings first and that includes the shadows. So you'll see me work through and get all of the veins drawn in and all of the shadowed areas working with some different pencils. I have a Polychromos Indian Red, and then you're going to see me come through with some Prismacolor um, Tuscan Red and also a Black Raspberry Pencil. And I think it's really helpful to be able to see my reference image over there on the left because you can see maybe the reasons why I'm doing what I'm doing, where I'm putting things. Getting this last really prominent vein drawn in. And any of the darkest shadowed areas. Now I'm using some brighter pencils. I've got a Prismacolor Jasmine and also a Polychromos Yellow Lemon, which is kind of a fluorescent green color. And you can see some of those undertones in the reference image. I draw in photorealism, so my goal at this point is to copy that reference as close as possible. I really enjoy that process of trying to get as close as I can, but ultimately in the end I will tend to veer away from it a little bit and um, as long as I'm happy with the end result it doesn't have to look exactly like the photo reference. Just trying to get close. There I'm using that ivory polychromos to create just some dots and indentations in the paper so that when I come over later with more layers of colored pencil, the cream and white underneath there will still show through. So beginning to come back through and add some of the lighter shadows here. Still working with the Polychroma's Indian Red. going right up to the edge, being really careful to stay inside that line. I like to make sure that my drawings have really nice crisp edges and I want to keep the white of that paper really nice and clean.
just increasing the width on that outer line. I'm always using a really light to medium pressure on these first few layers. Um, a lot of times a pressure of maybe just a two or a three is good enough. It's going to depend a little bit on which brand of pencils you're using and which types of paper you're drawing on. The Bristol Smooth Paper is just like it's named, really smooth and gives a really nice painted look for your end result. Just not a lot of texture in that paper. Starting to work through with my Prismacolor Tuscan Red. For a drawing this size, a lot of times I tend to just go color by color with my pencils. But you can work in smaller areas if that's easier for you. I used to work in just small areas at a time and as I've gotten more experience, I found that it's easier for me to work this way. Working through the entire piece with the shadows and just specific colors. If I were working on a larger piece or even a still life, I would just go uh, subject by subject within that larger piece. There's a Prismacolor Salmon Pink. It's a really bright peachy color. Just sort of splotching some of that around, not filling in total areas or completing any areas with that color, but just getting little bits of it here and there. And then I can work around that. And those areas will stay nice and bright. And now I'm starting to fill in some of the main mid-tones with some brighter reds. I have a permanent red Prismacolor. I also was using Poppy Red and Crimson Lake. Those Prismacolor pencils are waxy pencils. They're just really nice and creamy and one layer of those pencils will deposit lots of pigment on the paper. Helps you to fill in the tooth of the paper really quickly. Not everybody likes to work with the Prismacolors, but I do really love them. You can get a large set relatively inexpensively um, when compared to some of the other professional types of pencils. And they have a really great color range for my botanical art. Some of the brighter reds and pinks and purples and things that I have trouble finding in some of the other sets are available in the large set of Prismacolors. There's a uh, pale vermilion, which is kind of an orangey red. Anyway, personally, I really love these pencils. Just about got that filled in. I'm going to blend this out next using some Gamsol Odorless Mineral Spirits. This is just a solvent that dissolves the pencil pigment and creates a really nice smooth base that I can use to come back over with more pencil and add some details and things. I'm using a Royal and Langnickel number no. two Filbert watercolor brush to apply the Gamsol. It's just a really inexpensive brush that's just perfect for this application. 
There I'm using a Winsor & Newton number two miniature round brush just to get into some of those tinier little spaces on the sleeve. Again, I don't want to allow any of that solvent to bleed outside the edge of my drawing because I want to keep the paper really nice and bright white. I use just a very small amount of the solvent on the brush and then I dab it off onto usually an old sock but you can use any kind of cloth. And depending on how dry or wet my brush is with the solvent, I can use several different techniques. But for this process of just dissolving the pigment, I do not need very much solvent on the brush. Fairly, I would um, consider it to be a fairly dry brush. So after the Gamsol has dried, I'm ready to come back through and add some more layers of pencil to this drawing. I'm going to want to brighten the colors back up and add a few details here and there that are missing. A lot of times when you initially apply the Gamsol, it can dull the look of your drawing a little bit because it's blending some of those colors together. And you just need to come back through and brighten everything up. I just started off by going back through the same way that I did initially by using some of those darker shadow colors. Just about every part of my drawing gets at least one or two more layers of pencil. I very rarely leave um, Gamsol as one of the last steps. I'm doing a series of three of these drawings as real-time tutorials on my Patreon page this week. You may have already seen the first drawing here on YouTube, and there will still be one more drawing to come. This is leaf number two, autumn leaf number two. I like to draw seasonally, and I look forward all year to getting to draw the leaves in the fall. I collected probably 20 or more leaves and took hundreds of photos before I decided on the references that I wanted to use. So this leaf is in memory of one of my long walks this autumn. Getting out and taking some long walks has been one of the ways that we have dealt with the pandemic in our family, trying to keep healthy and mentally healthy as well. So coming back through with a little bit of that lemon yellow and also some of the Prismacolor Jasmine, just to get, there's just a hint of that brighter yellow underneath there. Taking it on down the stem. And now coming through with that pale vermilion, really just need to brighten this up some. Also got a polychromos brown ochre. A little bit of poppy red. And just some finishing details with some of the darker 
reds and then back through once again with the brighter reds. And here is my finished drawing. And here is the series of three leaves that I mentioned earlier I have done for Patreon. If you are interested in learning more about my drawing lessons over on Patreon, you can go to www.patreon.com slash Jennifer Morrison Art and find out more. And you can also visit my website, which is jennifermorrisonart.com slash Patreon tutorial links and you can see all of my available tutorials. I have over a hundred video lessons available now. You can see links to all of those over on my website. So I will be back probably tomorrow, sometime soon, with that third leaf in this series, and I hope you enjoyed this. I will see you then. Bye!